Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we have the Tamiya Frog. We're running on the Flysky G7P transmitter. We've got an AGFRC gyro in it and the MIP diff. Now we're going to swap this to brushless. And I've got one of the Surpass Hobby ESCs. And this is just a 60 amp brushless ESC. Uh, it does look quite big, so I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to mount in frog. But you do get a uh, on-off switch that's also in a huge case. And we've got quite a nice looking brushless motor. And this one is the 4370kV 4-pole motor. So it's an F540, it does say waterproof. Not that I'd uh, take these RCs in water. I think if I'm going to use an RC in water, it'll probably be a boat. But let's see how successful we can uh, swap this into the frog. So I'll get you in for a close up look and we'll strip out the stock motor and speed controller. I believe it's the Carson one we've got in this. And the brakes are really sharp on it, always locks wheels up. But let's see if we can somehow fit that in there. So you notice we've got the Sky RC GNSS um, GPS speed recorder. So I have run this with the stock settings and I'll show you that video once we get everything fitted. So you can see how it compares with the uh, MIP gearing for the diff to what it's going to run like brushless. So first off, let's uh, let's get the motor out, and I believe the shaft on the new brushless motor is the same size as the shaft on the stock Tamiya motors, so it should be a direct swap with the pinion. Might have to unplug that first. So this is going to be a bit more awkward with a frog because it's got its uh, two little antennas on. But let's get the battery out first. Now on this one, we've been testing it on the Gen Zace bashing batteries. So let's unplug a stock motor. So that's his motor removed. Uh, let's offer up this one. So it looks like doesn't look like we're going to be having a problem with the uh, actual motor shaft but I'm not sure how big this motor is physically compared to the stock Tamiya it does look very close so we're going to need to remove his pinion so one thing we're definitely going to have to do is play around and see where his pinion needs to be set because it is small pinion than stock yeah so let's see if uh, if this is going to line up at all I think looking at it just need to drop the pinion out ever so slightly from where we've got it now I do have one of these style motors mounted to the Monster Beetle so I'm pretty sure we can get this style motor mounted to this gearbox so if I do my best to get the cardboard on first and luckily we have got a lot of different mounting positions on these motors Which is quite nice gives you plenty of options so if we just start that off by a few threads so it looks like that's about as far round as we're going to be able to bring it let's see what that's going to sit like So 
So I might have to take a little bit more off the body. I think that would be his only other option. There. The only other way to take them would be under the body itself. But I don't think we're going to get that, no matter what we try. But, let's see if we, if we have any luck. So, we're going to need the stock speed controller removing. This is definitely going to be easier said than done because it's stuck to the side of the servo. But we should be able to work this loose. I tend to use the uh, 3M stickers for this. they do peel off if you need them to. So that's as channel 2 disconnected. got his little stock speed controller removed as you can see it's quite a difference in size in these things and uh, I believe these are 70 amp and these are only 60 but they will run brushless so next thing have we got enough room anywhere inside for this so let's have a look at what uh, what options we've got to get some tape in there to stick that down now it looks like there is room to spin it sideways as well and that still leaves plenty of room for battery so let's see how we go about getting this stuck in so we're going to need a bit of tape on the centre and then I think we'll get rid of, we'll get away with a bit of tape on the ledge on the far side. Right, so I've finally got that in there. Um, moved the receiver down to the front. Stuffed the speedo in that way round. Brought the wires up under here. If you do find that you pull the trigger and it goes faster in reverse and shoots off backwards, Rather than reversing the controller, just reverse two of these wires round. So you can switch any two of the three motor wires and that'll correct it. But if we get a battery in there. And you can see this, it's pretty much tied up to it. It's not going to be able to move anywhere at all. So surprisingly, it's a tight fit, but it does fit really well in this chassis. And as you can see, I brought the motor wires up around there. Um, the body, I've took a slight bit extra from here. And we've got the receiver now mounted up front with uh, all the cables for the gyro and everything into it. And it, it is easier to get to stuff this way around. So maybe 
maybe it's a nice way of, of working this RC but it's definitely easier to get to the plugs on the receiver with it being at front at side of that servo we've got the power wire just coming through front so let's get the uh, body shell on The good thing with a little frog, it's not that often you need to take body shell off to do anything to it. Now, I could have possibly got away with not clipping anything off the body shell on this side, but I just didn't want it chafing through these wires. So I've cut a tiny little bit more off just so it's not actually cutting into them cables. But it does fit and it does look quite nice. But uh, let's see how it powers up, see how it performs. Still not worked out where I actually want the power cables on this. Because no matter where you put them, you've either got a balance lead flying around close to your back wheel, or you've got power cables stuck out at side. But the power switch I've mounted underneath on the bottom here. They've definitely got one hell of a fan on these uh, speed controllers. Well, it's certainly got to uh, seems like it's higher rpm so the only thing to do is get this outside and see how quick it goes well there we have it a little bit awkward to get in there bit of messing about um i did try video in the trying to get the speed controller in but you'd not see anything but at least you can tell where it's in where we've got the receiver and it does seem to work really well and it is a hell of a lot more lively so we've gone from about 18 mile an hour to around 30 odd just over 30 mile an hour um can't see any issues with getting high temperatures or anything like that the speed controller can run 3s and we're only running it 2s the motor's got plenty of airflow over it and there's nothing blocking the actual cooling fan on the speed controller but it is really lively um did manage to uh, flip the frog over so it's kind of lost its little antenna flags um, but the antennas do stop the car getting scratched so it's definitely worth uh, running these on especially if you've uh, got a brushless motor in there makes it a lot more lively um, the brakes are a little bit too sharp on it so it's just locking wheels up but i do have a programming card that should work with this speed controller so in another video we might have to have a look see if we can uh, tame it down a bit on brakes but thanks again for watching wtfrc cars if you like this kind of content don't forget to like and subscribe hit the notification bell share to friends and family and i'll catch you guys again in the next one Where are you?